hello web developers uh, welcome to another project walkthrough uh, this is the hello world project walkthrough for watch 3010 introduction to web development so for many of you this will probably be your first project walkthrough uh, which is great welcome to the team uh, we're excited to work with you hopefully this helps you get on your way to being able to do all of these projects uh, throughout this quarter as well as um, in all of the future courses so what we're basically going to do is get everything set up so that we can actually do work on a web page and deploy that work to a public server so that other people can see what we've done. Um, in order to do this, we're going to set up a system that we're going to use in every single project throughout this quarter. So we will be working with this ba basic approach on every single project throughout this quarter. So um, what we're doing today, we will then do every time we do another project, we'll just keep adding more and more and more to our list of projects. So. It should be pretty cool. Um, we're going to be working, this is the Hello World project, and in the course, this is what it looks like when you're viewing the, court, the page. If you click this link, it will open up this um, repository here on GitHub. So this is a set of files that we're going to start from, and you notice that it has a bunch of instructions about how to complete this. So before you can do anything here, you must have a GitHub account. So if you haven't made a GitHub account, go ahead and pause this video, make an account on github.com, and then come back and, and watch the rest. Um, basically, uh, what we're going to do here is um, we want to make a copy of this repository, this Hello World repository, in our personal account. And so to make that copy on GitHub, that's called forking a repository. So we're gonna fork our own copy to our own account. So I'm gonna click fork there, and it's gonna say, where do we fork this repository? And I'm gonna say to my account personally. And so we're gonna wait for that to copy over. And once that copies over, then we can start working with it as if we owned it. So you notice now that we can see that it's forked from SU Web Dev, but uh, this is actually our own copy that we own in here. So now that we have this copy made for ourselves, we can start doing work uh, in uh, Code Envy. And so Code Envy is the platform that we're using and uh, as our development tool, it's our integrated development environment. And so uh, they have a free developer tier that we can use and this will be more than enough for all of the courses that we're doing as part of the web development program. Uh, this is a great tool. Uh, when you click this sign up now link, you'll end up here on uh, this sign up page. Uh, if you've already made a GitHub account, it's very convenient to just log in with GitHub. Uh, you could also log in with your Google account or your Visual Studio Team Services account if you have one of those. Or you could make a brand new login um, by creating one uh, just with an email address. Um, but I, I like to um, log in with the GitHub account, so that's how I'm going to log in. Um, now I'll click this and because I've already authorized this website, it's going to put me right into my Code Envy dashboard. Um, but I've gotten rid of everything in my dashboard so that this is kind of what your dashboard will look like. Uh, you'll have just nothing here uh, when you first log in. And what we need to do is we need to actually create a workspace. So if we click workspaces here, it will show that we have no workspaces. But as the directions here say, a workspace is where our projects live and run. Uh, so that's that's what we need. We're going to create one workspace that we're going to use over and over again uh, with different projects. So um, we'll create a workspace, and I will just call. You could keep the the generic name. I'm going to call it um, just uh, Sean R because that's that's the name that I like for myself. Um, this will just be personal um, for this uh, workspace. We want to have a um, a, just a blank stack is fine. We could also uh, pick a node stack and that would be fine if you thought that you were going to work with some node.js stuff or whatnot. Um, and if you were working with any other technology, you could pick a different stack too. That's partly why this tool is so um, useful to us. But for now, um, I'll just pick uh, a blank stack because for our, our Watts 3010 introduction to web development work, this is more than enough. Um, and we don't really need to modify anything else. Uh, we can just create it. Um, and so I will go ahead and create it. And what that's going to do is that's going to create us a blank workspace. So this workspace is going to load up. And 
once it boots up, then I can import projects to it. So I can import all of the different projects that I work on throughout the quarter and keep working in the same workspace. And they're gonna show up here in my project explorer over on this side. Um, the workspace is now booted and running, so that's great. I'm going to hide this side menu bar. This little arrow shows me my master Code Envy, so if I needed to mess with my account or do anything else more complicated with Code Envy, I could do that. But mostly I'm just going to be living in this um, editor and this integrated development environment here. Um, so the first thing that I want to do is import a project. And so if I have no projects, then there's this import project button and I can see that the shortcut is um, it looks like uh, control A um, but I could also go here to workspace and I could um, import a project here and uh, that's the exact same command so I'll just click that that works for everything um, then I'm gonna click github and uh, I could paste in the clone URL from a repository and you'll learn more about those later on but it's much easier if I actually just load the repo and when I click load um, if it's the first time that you've clicked it it might ask you if you want to authorize uh, code envy and it might mention something about uh, creating uh, SSH keys and an OAuth connection that's fine say yes to that and that that's great um, once you do that it will show you this list from your github account now I'm in several organizations on github you'll just see your personal list here like I see. And then um, this shows me all of my um, repositories in alphabetical order. Now I've used GitHub a lot, so I have a whole bunch of repositories here, but I can um, go into um, the list and I can find Watch 3010 Hello World, which is what the, the repository that I forked uh, from the SU Web Dev Starter. So this is the repository for this assignment this week. So I can just select that and I can hit import and um, and it will all work fine. You notice that it also populated the, the clone URL up here and um, and that's handy because uh, if I if I didn't have that populated or you know if I wanted to I could just copy that URL out directly and paste it in there and that would be another way to connect um, and do it. So you have two options. I like using the load repo button because it shows me the list and I can easily browse them and it shows me the description for each one. So it's easy enough to select. Uh, I hit import and um, then it's going to ask me what what type of setup do you want to use for this project and so for all of the projects throughout this um, this quarter we can just use the blank setup if we were doing anything more complicated we might pick one of these other ones um, and you'll know more when you need one of these other ones because you'll be working with a different technology at that point in time but for now we can just um, select blank and then uh, we can browse and this is a pretty simple repository uh, we can click here and um, if we double click on this we will get the file open here and so we can see that our index.html file just has about nine lines to it and um, if we go back here to the readme we can see that we've actually completed the first good chunk um, we signed up to github we signed into code envy we used the load repo button to clone the repo and now we need to replace jane student with our own name um, so that should be easy enough to do if i click back here uh, I can say uh, Sean Ryder and Sean Ryder um, and so you can see that I've made those changes so now I can save uh, and I can save by using um, my regular save shortcut like uh, or it also auto saves for you so actually it's it's auto saved now but if I were to um, type something else I could use the command S on the Mac or control S on the PC to save it. Um, and I could also, uh, I think I might be able to like, I don't know, there's probably a save link somewhere in here. But as a developer, you should probably get pretty used to using your control S or command S save um, <laughs> to save because that, that's a shortcut that we use a lot. Uh, I could also change around the window if I want to while I'm working. Um, I could add like uh, bold tags around my name here um, to make it look a little bit different. And uh, once I want to preview my work, I can right click on uh, the index.html and then click preview and it will open up a new tab and show me my file. Um, I can see that my name is bolded there. Uh, I can see that I have the name showing up there, my name. Um, I could uh, 
change this from hello world, I could say hello universe and save that. And then I could just click back over here and I can hit refresh and it will update with whatever changes I make to the file. So this is how you can work um, on changes to your files. You just uh, right click on the index.html and hit preview. Remember index.html is the first site in, in any website. And so right click, hit preview, and then it will open up the preview window. And um, you notice this is kind of a weird URL and everything, but that doesn't really matter that much uh, as long as we can see our file and as long as it changes. So um, we can say, uh, this is a big, big hello from Sean Ryder. And we'll um, see that if we click back over here and then we hit refresh, we get all of the text updated. So we've succeeded at making our changes um, to our file. So now what we need to do is commit those changes and push them back to GitHub. And Code Envy gives us some really easy ways. So we've, we used Git to clone our repository from GitHub. Uh, GitHub is a site that stores files for us. Git is an application that we use for managing files. Here uh, in Code Envy, um, we will use Git to commit our changes and then push them back up to GitHub. So that means we're uploading the changes back to GitHub. And to do that, I'm just going to right click on the name of this directory and I'm going to go down here to Git and I'm going to select commit. And when I do that, it shows me the files that have changed that I'm going to commit and I could uncheck them or check them. I want to make sure that they're checked here. This is the one file that I changed and so that's the one file that I'm going to commit. Then I'm going to click down here and I'm going to say um, alter the content of the index.html file. Um, and so that will be a convenient message that will let me know what I did. And then the, the other thing that I want to do here is I want to say push committed changes to origin master. Now that's origin master will be the default there. And throughout this quarter, you can just leave it to that default. We want to push these changes back up. Origin means w the place where we cloned this repository from. So that means GitHub. And then master is the master branch. And that's what we're updating here is we're updating the master branch. That means the main branch of the repository. So I hit commit and now I can see here in my terminal window that I have a message that says that um, it committed at this time by user Sean Ryder. And so that's, that's just great. Um, it will then show these changes here on, um, on my GitHub repository. So if I refresh, you can see that the last commit was 26 seconds ago. And uh, that commit says alter the content of the index.html file. If I click here, I can actually see what that looks like. This is how GitHub views that change set. So I can see that it thinks that I deleted the line and replaced it with this line. And so those are actually all the changes that I made. So that all looks looks perfectly good. If I click into the settings on this repository, I can now go down to set it up so that it will actually deploy these this website to a place where other people can click on it. So here I'm going to say deploy to master branch and I'm going to hit save. And what will happen is that it says GitHub pages sources saved. And then when I scroll down here, it will show me your site is ready to be published at hello world. And so if I click this, um, I'm actually going to copy this link address and I'm going to make a new tab and go to it directly. And you notice that I see the page that I worked on and it is running at my GitHub URL. Now I have completed more courses in the program and so I have a, a custom domain pointing to my GitHub pages. Yours will be your GitHub username uh, dot GitHub dot IO. Something like that is what it will look like there. But if I go to this, it's going to switch me back to my custom domain because uh, that's what I have configured on GitHub. You'll learn how to do that in the second quarter of the program. Um, but what we've done now is actually successfully complete this. So if I wanted to, I could go the extra mile. I could go back here and hit edit on the description and I could paste in the URL for the deployed version and I could hit save 
And what it will do is it will then add that URL up here so that anybody could easily click to it and see the deployed version if they come to this repo. But that is the deployed URL that I need to, I need to turn in for my assignment. And then this URL up here is the repository URL. So if I go back to my actual assignment page, um, you'll notice that uh, the deliverables here are the URL for the repository and the URL for the location where it can be viewed online. So this is the URL for the repository and this is the URL for where it can be seen online. So, um, so that's it. We've, we've successfully completed this project. Uh, with Code Envy now, we can just close this tab and, and the next time we come back, all of this code will still be there. Um, if we uh, leave this or if we refresh, we can easily see that uh, all of our stuff will be there. It will start our server back up again um, and because we were just using it, it's still running, so it doesn't even have to restart. After an hour or so, it shuts down and it has to restart the server, but that's, that's not that big of a deal. And um, this is how we're going to do work throughout this quarter. So uh, try to get comfortable uh, with Code Envy. We'll learn a lot more about it as we keep working in it uh, throughout the quarter. Uh, remember that there are um, preferences that you can set um, in terms of um, code formatting, right? And so uh, we, can, um, we can also uh, go through, there's a bunch of um, editor settings, there's a bunch of appearance settings, we can switch to a different theme if we wanted. Um, and so uh, this is all um, you know, available for you to poke around and check out and try to get it to a place where you like it. I don't particularly care for these highlight colors, so maybe I'll change those or something in the future. But um, nonetheless, that is how we uh, set up our workspace. Uh, next time we come in, we'll just be able to clone the, uh, the project into our projects list here, and then we'll just be able to start working on it right away. And we won't have to create new accounts on Code Envy or GitHub, but we'll be able to jump right into things. So I hope this has been successful for you. I look forward to working with you um, in lab or online, and uh, good luck completing the Hello World project. Congratulations, everybody. See you soon.